What's interesting to me about kudzu is its ability to grow fairly rapidly and produce those long trailing vines that can grow up and over obstacles, whether it be a tree or, or abandoned cars or even abandoned homes and, and structures. And as it grows over, particularly vegetation, it crowds out the other vegetation for sunlight and nutrients that they need for their growth as well. So it kind of dominates an area in which it becomes established. As a legume, is like a lot of legume plants, is pretty unique in the fact that it has, unknown to a lot of folks because they see the large leaves, that it has actually three leaflets that makes up a single leaf. These are pretty broad, large leaves that are leaflets that often are lobed. Uh, and another characteristic about kudzu is it has these real hairy stems. It can flower, and typically it will flower in late summer. It has a, a beautiful purple bloom, uh, purple to bluish uh, bloom in which it uh, creates. And it can sometimes produce seed or seed pod that looks a little bit like a, a bean, uh, relatively flat, that's hairy. But one of the forgiving things about kudzu is that they very seldom the seed very viable. So it doesn't reproduce as well from seed as it does from its rootstock. It has a very interesting history in regards to how it was initially introduced into the U.S. In fact, Japan had brought it to the U.S. for the centennial expedition that was in Philadelphia. It had a little bit of popularity from naturalists and others who saw it as a very interesting plant that could be used as a natural shade to be planted around landscapes or even near front porches. In fact, one of the names for this particular plant is called the porch vine. Kudzu is a, a plant that gets a lot of notoriety because of where you see it. And a lot of times, most people see it driving down the road or in areas where we have a lot of visibility. But one of the other pieces about kudzu that most people don't realize, you will not find kudzu in the deep areas of the forest. It is like sunlight in order to, to thrive. So it's mostly along the edges of forested areas or other open areas and where you get plenty of sunlight. introduction probably occurred on railroad right-of-ways and other roadside right-of-ways where were they making cuts through the mountainous areas or on steep slopes and fill areas where they wanted to create some quick cover. Kentucky's sort of on the northern edge where kudzu has a more desirable habitat for growth. The largest concentration of it is in southeast Kentucky, but you can find patches of kudzu in most of the 120 counties. Areas where you have kudzu, it is a significant problem because of the difficulty of control. Well, our number one method of control for kudzu is mowing. We also do uh, quite a bit of spraying for kudzu. Mostly what we're doing is suppressing the kudzu, try to keep it back. Of course, that's a, that's a temporary solution because it, it grows, literally grows a foot a day. And quite often it actually requires multiple seasons of spraying where you have to go back and spray it the next year, sometimes uh, even a third year in order to get full control. And I've seen areas that have been completely burned off and then the next spraying, it just comes back with a vengeance. One of the quicker ways to reduce the population would be by grazing. In fact, where you have grazing occurring, the animals are continuously removing top growth, forcing the plant to use up its root reserves. But the problem with grazing in Kentucky is most of our kudzu is on steeper slopes or in areas that are not accessible to animals, even for goats and, and other livestock animals. A kudzu vine typically may be a hundred foot long from the end of the vine back to the actual root system. It's, it's very persistent. It has a, a root system like a tree 
very deep roots. You know, once it's there, it's, it's going to stay there. Kudzu is a poster child of a plant that illustrates how plants that are introduced for meaningful purposes can sometimes be our, one of our bigger menaces. Hey everybody, I'm Chip Holston and I am cherishing this Kentucky life. And if you enjoyed that story and would like to see more, click right here to see more.